So I kind of regret not having bought this bike sooner. Chaco, do you want to be in the video? <laughs> Hello everyone. I just, uh, I caved. I saw a Black Friday special, so I went ahead and ordered a new bike. Oi! Oh. As you all know, the bike industry is in an interesting time right now where there's tons of bikes available and at very low prices. Well, I'm just like all of you. I scroll through the internet and see what's available. And I noticed a certain bike that you all know what it is because you've seen the thumbnail and the title of this, the Santa Cruz Bronson, was heavily marked down on sale. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to try one of these things. And at that price, I could afford to. So here we go. We got a Santa Cruz Bronson. This is the Bronson 4.1, not to be confused with 4.2 or 4.0. CMX. I think all Bronsons are MX mullet, but what do I know? Size medium bike, I'm five foot eight. Every bike on my YouTube channel is a size medium. Keep it simple like that. I'm excited to pop this thing open, see what this bike actually looks like in the flesh. Before I do, I wanna give a big thanks to my friends over at Jensen USA. Yay! They're an online retailer for mountain bikes, parts, and accessories, and they're one of the largest, which means they're able to take advantage of some really good purchases from brands like Santa Cruz and get a lot of inventory in at great pricing that they then pass along to consumers. I got a little bit of a better deal on this than the retail pricing because I do work with Jensen. Jensen sponsored this video and uh, I have the Bronson link to down in the description below where you can most likely take advantage of that great sale pricing. I got this as a frame only. That's a really fun way to get a new bike and you get to build it up with exactly the parts you want. Oh, it's orange. Oh, let's cut this thing open. This looks sweet. Look at that. Nice. Ooh. Everyone tells me to leave the frame skins on, but I feel like they're kind of ugly and I feel like you get dirt underneath them and it's just a mess. Glad we got that frame skin off before we actually rode it. Look at this thing. This thing's sweet. Flip chips back here. It's got a fender in back, so I won't get muddy as I ride through puddles. That's cool. Check it out. We got in-frame storage. I never use these. Is that salmon? Holy cow. That's cool. It came with some salmon. It's still a little warm. You wanna try some, Riley? No, thank you. Is that why it came with the salmon? Look, it's the salmon SDS Plus. Look at that. Comes with salmon, looks like salmon, tastes like salmon. What a win. It's on sale. I wonder if the kitty wants to try some. Oh, there you go. Get in there. I am not into the in-frame internal storage. Like, I don't want to futz around on the side of the trail trying to fish out everything from inside my frame. You could put your fishing pole in here so you can catch more salmon mid-ride. Spike looks delicious. Let's build it up and get cooking. If you scroll on down to the description of the video, well, I've got a full list of all the parts I'm using on the Santa Cruz Bronson, and I've got all the appropriate links to find those parts at Jensen USA. Anything you purchase from those links over at Jensen, well, that'll help support my channel. It'll also let Jensen know that you are real and that you enjoy my videos. And finally, it's a huge way we're actually able to make all this content happen. Big thanks to all of you, and big thanks to Jensen USA. At the end of the day, one of the best parts of mullet bikes is the fact that you can usually find an old rear wheel that you forgot about because it's that old 27.5 size. You have a spare 29 inch front wheel because you broke your carbon 29 inch wheels. So you happen to have a spare front. You have a wheel set. You have probably a few parts laying around. You grab a frame on sale. All of a sudden you Frankensteined yourself a bike. And then the stoke level of pulling a bike out of thin air is so high that I think that makes up for a lot of the disadvantages you could say of having the smaller rear wheel. So I'm gonna use some other parts I've had kicking around here. I have this 160 Travel Lyric 29 inch fork. I've got a set of Industry 9 carbon wheels using We Are One Union rims and Industry 9 Hydra hubs. When it comes to the components, I've got a mix of XTR and XT parts, all Shimano. I really enjoy Shimano products, so I'm excited to get this thing built up as such. 
So the build on the Bronson is going pretty well. I'm about ready to throw on crank set and chain guide. I'm stoked this bike has ISCG tab stock. For this bike, I'm gonna run a one-up chain guide, which has a pretty decent, a pretty healthy little taco bash guard underneath. And I don't know, maybe you never make mistakes when you're riding your bike, in which case you're really good at bikes and you should probably subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, but if you're like me, you make a lot of mistakes and you smack things all the time. Most of the mullet bikes I've ridden have been like kind of hodgepodge. This is a purpose-built mullet, so I hope it works a little bit better for me. I'm looking forward to riding this bike though. It's coming along good, quick build. Santa Cruz makes nice bikes and uh, I hope to ride it as soon as tomorrow. I made the short little jaunt to a very fun local mountain. Got Logan with me. We're gonna try out some of the more fun, more natural features and try to get more of a feel for the Bronson. I want to make like Tim Hortons and get in the express lane. I wasn't expecting this bike to be this cool. This is almost reminding me of like two years ago and I got that Rocky Mountain Altitude. And I was like, oh cool, I might like it. We'll try it, whatever. And then start riding the thing and holy cow, eyes end up wide open. Yeah, the Bronson 160 up front, 150 in back. Not super aggressive geometry, a little bit shorter reach, a little shorter wheelbase than say a Ritmo for instance even though it has more travel and back than the Ritmo. Still a scope shorter. So how does it feel on the trail? Well, ride number one was yesterday. First ride on the new Bronson. Let's do this. Hello. You guys have asked me a lot of questions about this bike down in the comments, particularly on the Stump Jumper Evo videos. This ride's pretty short, so let's get up to the top, drop in and see how this thing feels on the important part of the ride. Hello. I gotta believe this back brake. This bike handles nice. I like that slightly shorter feel. More responsive. Weird. That axle path. That's kind of cool. I like it. It feels like it almost grows underneath. There's a dad joke in there somewhere. Nick just trimmed up that berm, so nice. Thanks, bud. That heinous rattling sound is me having forgotten to tighten down the rear brake caliper. Don't worry, I survived. That was a ton of fun. I'm surprised at how much I like this bike. I'm really looking forward to riding again tomorrow and I'll bring you all along. Over and out for the day. Ride number two was today. This is not a long-term review, more of an initial impressions thing. Full transparency, I've really fallen in love with this bike, way more than I expected to. I have not been the biggest fan of mullet bikes over the years. I don't like how when you pump, the two wheels accelerate at a different rate. What is the advantage of going to a mullet setup? Let me know in the comments down below, what does this do better? We changed the wheels and the geometry didn't actually change. We just lost a little bit of rear end traction and a little bit of rear wheel rollover and you know we lost a little bit of smoothness and I, I wasn't seeing any advantages there so let me know what am I blind to what am I missing I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say that back in 2013 the Bronson got as lucky as Daft Punk and was the most popular and hyped 27.5 bike available the bike remained popular but the following it originally earned stagnated and eventually fell off but in mid 2021 just like Pharrell the Bronson hit prime time this time the bike finally went mullet one of the most sought after bikes during the rampant charge for mulleting was the clandestine specialized status. Utilizing very strange sales and marketing tactics, the status had a bit of a cult following as an affordable mullet bike. But it was hard to find these statuses and simultaneously specialized released an aftermarket linkage for the more common stump jumper Evo. This link would raise and steepen the bike to allow the mullet curious to safely run the little tiny rear 27.5 wheel, which in turn would bring the Evo's geometry back to more closely aligned with its original dual 29 inch configuration. Today, the Stump Jumper Evo remains one of the most common mountain bikes currently on the market. I went ahead and bought one myself to understand the hype. I rode it extensively as both a Dual 29 and as a mullet. On paper, the geometry is extremely close between my medium Bronson and S3 Stump Jumper Evo. But what keeps me employed is that the ride feel is quite different between the two mullet machines. The Bronson suspension platform pedals a little bit better than the Stump Jumper, as it feels both a bit firmer while pedaling, but also offers a little bit more traction when you need it. 
That's not a big deal though, as any advantage of the better suspension design is then lost by the smaller rear wheel. But mullet to mullet, the Bronson does pedal better. For technical climbing, the Bronson did better. It accelerated more promptly, with more traction, and any sort of hops were more precise and resulted in less change to ride height. I found I caught fewer pedals on the Bronson, likely due to the more progressive suspension, but also this could be due to the higher inherent damping of the larger shock. I'm blown away at how good this bike's riding and the tight technical stuff. It's so intuitive. I just think up a route and it goes up the route. And on top of that, trying to get here, pedaling along a lot of like service roads, access roads, it just cruises along at a pretty good clip. It's not nearly as inefficient as the other mullet bikes I've ridden that have more weight on the 27.5 rear wheel. This bike's more neutral, which is probably why it works so well with the low speed hoppy stuff. I'm really impressed with this. I'm having a great time. The weight distribution feels better on the Bronson and for me, the bike felt more predictable. Part of that could be from the excellent carbon layup on the Bronson. The bike doesn't flex in any weird, unpredictable ways. While the Stumpy Evo isn't at all bad, it is a softer torsional feel, which in extreme situations can lead to a little unpredictability. During slower trail speed situations, the bikes are super close, but at higher speeds, the higher impact situations, the advantages of the Bronson become most apparent. We're also caught comparing a $1,300 aluminum frame to a $2,200 carbon frame, but that's the reality of the current situation. How does the Bronson do on drops? Let's find out. Rear suspension had a lot of support. I really enjoyed it. Uh, when I'm landing from drops and jumps and stuff and hucks, whatever it may be, I never smashed bottom out uncomfortably hard. This is a very long shock. It's a 230 by 60 rear shock, which is the same length shock that like the SB160, the HD6, the Orbea Rayon. All those bikes are even more travel than this and they use that same big old shock size. I think that helps this thing feel so controlled. Hmm. There's the creek. Tighten something. I did not throw a wrench on any of the frame. I bet it's that one. Oh, is it? the linkage bolt to the swing arm. Also, when I had one of these, these would come loose a lot. Oh, I can't wait. Cool, well, that'll be fun. Let's see if it gets looser before we tighten it. Then we'll know for sure. Let's throw the six onto the rear axle. Yeah, we're tight back there. Oh, barely. That's tight AF. Let's just not worry about it. I guess expander was a smidge loose. It's like, it's great geometry. It's well built. There's decent attention to detail. It's wild. So much different than my bike. Yeah. It's different than the HD6. It's oh. my first attempted manual on this bike. That was pretty close. Torsional stiffness is also really good and really spot on. I kept finding that I could just like jump out of things and then reposition the bike and then land and there'd be no surprises. Uh, that's kind of a rare trait these days. A lot of bikes feel okay and then you don't notice that they're flexing until you ride something that's a little bit stiffer. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Gonna get a little YouTube-y here. Rumor has it this trail was built by Eric, BCPOV. I know that Eric and Yuka built another trail up here in the same hill. That trail is real fun. I don't think we're gonna hit it today though. This would have been a project before they or he did that other trail. So props to Eric. Um, I watched a couple videos from this trail last night and it's gonna be fun to sample it. Let's make like rabbits and do it. Someone left their bike in the middle of the trail. This is a classic squid move, and I've got an entire tutorial video on how to not be a squid linked in the YouTube card to your top right. Alright, let's 
feel this thing out. I probably got to jump. Kind of feeling it out. Jump that. Oh. First try, that was sweet. Didn't think I'd get the double, but it flows nicely. I'm gonna try it again real quick. This is probably the right bike for it too, because it pops very nicely. I'm gonna keep riding this thing. We're gonna get a ton of rain here, so the next few rides will be very slow, but I wanted to come out here and film someplace rad in the dry and in the light so you could all see what this thing looks like when it's not pouring buckets. So I've been riding this Bronson quite a bit, much as I could in between the rainstorms over the last, oh, three or four weeks. Not a huge amount of time. I wanna be very transparent with that. However, I have been riding it through a ton of rain and weather events. It's a balmy 37 degrees out. Somehow it's not too frozen down here. Let's head out on the Bronson, do a quick little ride vlog. The Bronson. And you can tell it's a Bronson because of the way it is. How neat is that? So far, it's holding up pretty good. I've gotten a little bit of creaking from the front end. I don't know if it's uh, headset bearings or whatever, but not a huge deal at all. It's very subtle. I, don't, I can't hear it at all on the trail, just like when I'm trying to show the bike off. On the downhills, the bike feels tiny, but it still feels pretty adept. It's just a really fun feel. No, it's not a race bike feel, and it's kind of better that way. My personal favorite kind of trails, you can't just point the bike down it and then modulate the brakes and do nothing. You have to work for it and move the bike and manipulate it and position it and pump it through things or the bike just won't roll. I like that technical aspect of mountain biking. The Bronson excels when you have to put input into the bike. On the flip side, when it is crazy steep and you're just modulating the brakes and holding on for dear life, Eh, it's not as planted and stable as something with more travel that is more aggressive. I don't really like riding those kind of gnarly trails. I'd rather ride the more fun stuff. So for me, this bike's been an absolute surprise home run at just how much fun it is. And at the end of the day, mountain biking's about home runs. Mountain biking's more about like KOMs, QOMs, standing on a podium at your local Masters 70 plus enduro race, then maybe get something a little bit faster and you can do that. That's not me though, so you do you. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever built a Frankenstein bike like that and if you agree that those are the most fun and satisfying bikes to whip out. All right, big thanks to all of you for making this possible. Thanks to Jensen USA for sponsoring the video. Check this out. Down in the description, there's a bunch of other Santa Cruz frames on closeout. Smoking deals. See what they've got. See what might work for you. If you don't need a bike, don't get a bike. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave me a friendly comment down below. All right, peace and wheelies, everyone.